northwestern part of Argentina, Salta is a province situated in the Andes Mountains and well known for its stunning natural scenery, Spanish architecture, and Andean history. Just south of Salta Capital is the picturesque wine town of Cafejate, famous for its red rock formations, countless vineyards, beautiful wineries, and of course, fine wines. Bordering on the north side is the province of Jujuy, filled with colorful mountains, valleys, forests, and salt flats. Our crew of four, two couples, spent one week exploring these unique areas of Argentina and in today's video, I'll be taking you on a journey to all three, Salta Capital, Jujuy, and lastly, Cafejate. I would love it if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you find this video helpful and want to see similar content in the future. Everything price related in this video will be based on the blue dollar exchange rate, meaning paying with cash, not with credit cards, and not withdrawing money from an ATM. If you are not familiar with the blue dollar exchange and how you can literally double your money in Argentina, I would recommend you to watch my recent video that explains everything you need to know about exchanging money on the Argentinian blue dollar exchange. Also, please remember that the inflation is rising rapidly in Argentina, so the prices I am quoting may be different than when you visit in the future. We spent the first two days in the city of Salta Capital and found it to be a fun and lively city with lots of beautiful European style architecture, interesting museums, and delicious restaurants. When searching for places to stay, we found there to be no shortage of amazing and affordable apartments and hotels. We ended up staying at a two bedroom Airbnb in the city center. I will leave all the names and links of the accommodations in the description below so you guys can check them out. Our primary way of getting around was walking as it's a great way to see a lot of the city and also get some exercise. However, when we needed to go further distances, we found it to be super convenient to get around using an Uber or taxis. And on average, a 10 minute Uber ride or taxi ride was no more than two to three dollars. There's also a bus system there, which we didn't use, but it would be a very economical option, especially for solo travelers. We spent most of our time walking around, admiring the various parks, churches, architecture, as well as visiting museums, going up to the top of the Teleferico San Bernardo, trying the typical food dishes, more on that next, and going out to the Casonas or Peñas at night. Now, I will share some of our highlights. We visited two museums while in Salta. The first was the History Museum of the North, which was super interesting for learning about the history of Salta. It houses many artifacts from the past, including old horse carriages, cars, weapons, and much more. The entrance fee for Argentinian nationals is free and foreigners pay no more than a couple bucks to enter. The second museum was the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology, which shares the history and artifacts from the Inca period thousands of years ago. And at the end of the museum, you will find a preserved mummy of a young woman who died over 500 years ago in the Andes Mountains at an altitude of 6,700 meters. And it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. And I would highly recommend going. The entrance fee was around $2 for Argentine nationals and around $3 for foreigners. If you want to see Salta from above, you can take the cable car up to the top of Mount San Bernardo. If you'd rather hike up, that's also an option. And at the top is a beautiful park with a nice water feature and of course views of the entire city. There are several artisans selling local products and there's also a cafe and a restaurant. The price to take the cable car up round trip was about $6. The nightlife in Salta was not only a lot of fun for us, but also was a great cultural experience. <laughs> Casonas, which are huge restaurants where musicians gather to play traditional folk music together. And we visited a different one each night, but our favorite one was La Casona del Molino. We loved everything from the authentic vibe, the multiple rooms with music, and the amazing food and wine. We ordered the Parijada por dos personas, which means they bring a small grill to your table with various cooked meats, and it's delicious. That brings us to our next topic, restaurants. Honestly, every restaurant we tried in Salta was really good and La Casona del Molino was our standout favorite. I always recommend asking locals what their favorite spots are or looking on Google Maps at nearby restaurants and checking their reviews. Make sure to try the typical dishes including that empanada, salteño, tamales, humitas, and locro. Quick tip, before we move on to Hibui, before leaving Salta, make sure to change your dollars on the blue dollar exchange as it's more difficult to do so in Hibui. 
You can easily find people in the Nueva de Julio main square and exchange your dollars with them in Salta. After two nights in Salta, we rented a car from a car rental agency at the Salta airport and drove three hours up to the region of Jujuy, where we spent the next three nights. Jujuy is a mountainous desert region scattered with cacti, beautiful landscapes, and quaint villages. It's the perfect region for road trips as things are pretty spread out and there are endless scenic places to stop throughout. We actually didn't book anything before coming as we weren't sure how far we would want to drive or which village we would want to stay in and wanted to keep our options open. In comparison to Salta Capital, we found there were fewer accommodation options as the towns are not so built up and it was slightly more expensive than Salta. However, we ended up staying in Tilcara the first night, Umuaka the second night, and at a hot spring hotel the third night. In Tilcara, we stayed at Tinku Cabañas, an adorable little bed and breakfast up on a hill overlooking the valley. In Humuaka, we stayed at a little casita called Cabaña El Cardón, down in the valley with beautiful views of the nearby scenery and distant mountain views. The third night, we were feeling like we wanted some time to relax, so we drove back down to the southern end of Hui and stayed at Perma de Reyes, a thermal bath hotel situated in a river valley and surrounded by luscious greenery. Every location was different from another, but all beautiful in their own unique ways. Looking back, I'm super happy that we decided not to stay in one place the whole time as the Hujuy region is so big and it was nice to be able to explore specific areas of the region each day and then stay close by to where we ended. We used our rental car the whole time to get around and if you don't have a car, you can organize day trips with tour companies from the different towns or if you want to explore solo, you can take buses around. However, from what I heard, they do have limited schedules, so you just need to check in advance. We visited three towns in the region and found that each one has its own unique style and culture. You're sure to find artisans displaying their handcrafted goods, delicious street food, restaurants, and scenic nature views. On our way into Kahui, we drove to Purma Marca, a small village set at the base of the famous Seven Colors Hill. You can walk up the nearby hills for spectacular views of the colorful mountains. And if you're feeling like taking a longer hike, you can also head up the Paseo de los Colorados Trail. In the town, you will also find adobe houses lighting the streets, musicians playing music in the alleys, and in the main square of Nueva de Julio, a crafts market with artisans selling traditional handmade goods. Even though it was the smallest of the three towns we visited, we were there on a Saturday afternoon and it felt more crowded than the other places, so if you can, I would avoid coming on weekends or come earlier in the day. We stayed our first night in Tilcada and found it to have a very lively vibe. It seemed like a very strategic and central place to stay in Mahui as there are so many things to do and see in the surrounding area, and it also has an abundance of restaurants and peñas in comparison to the other villages, so if you are looking to stay somewhere with more nightlife, Tilcara is a good option. Our second night we ended up staying in Umuaka, the furthest north and the most quaint and least touristic feel of the three towns we visited. In the center you will find a small square with an artisanal market and a few streets with traditional restaurants. Just outside the center you can drive or walk up to Peña Blanca, a tranquil little hill to walk around and see beautiful views of the valley. There are numerous quebradas or canyons throughout Bujuli, but the one we chose to visit was Quebrada de las Señoritas, located between Umuaca and Tilcara. The trek is not difficult and flat most of the way and will lead you into the beautiful red-colored slot canyons. The third largest salt flats in the world, the Salinas Grandes salt flats are definitely worth a visit. They're located a bit further out of the Jujuy Valley. You do have to first drive through Purma Marca and then up a huge mountain pass. And from Purma Marca, it took us about an hour and a half to get to the salt flats as the roads are very windy and steep and should definitely be driven with extreme caution. Once you arrive, you will see how vast and grand the salt flats truly are. Make sure to wear sunscreen and bring sunglasses as the reflection of the sun off the salt flats is super intense. And also pack water and fill up on gas before leaving as facilities like shops, restaurants, and gas stations are extremely limited. Both nights we ate at Peña's, restaurants with live music, and had a fun experience. For lunch we found roadside restaurants which both turned out to be super good. If you visit the salt flats, I would recommend eating at La Pecana, a restaurant on the side of the road a few kilometers before the salt flats with a great view. I recommend getting the empanadas as they were super fresh and some of the best in Argentina. 
said my Argentinian husband, which is saying a lot. After the salt flats, we drove a couple hours back down to go stay a night at the Derma de Reyes Hot Springs Hotel. This was a super relaxing experience for us and we would highly recommend it. When you book a room with the hotel, it gives you access to the spa area where you can enjoy the pool, sauna, and private thermal baths and also includes a breakfast buffet. There is also a beautiful restaurant on site serving delicious Argentine cuisine. If spas aren't of interest to you, I would recommend staying a night in San Salvador de Jujuy or if you are a wine lover, then head to Café Jate a day earlier. To be honest, Café Jate was one of my favorite places we visited in all of Argentina. From Jujuy, it's about a five hour drive and the last two hours of the drive are absolutely gorgeous. You will drive through a magical valley between red colored mountains, alongside a river with beautiful greenery, then through a desert with beautiful red rock formations. We stayed in a two bedroom Airbnb in the city center. The grounds were beautiful and had a large garden with a pool, fire pit, grill, and a small outdoor kitchen. It was a three minute walk to the main square where you can find an array of restaurants and wine tasting Unlike Jujuy, Café Jate is easier to get around without a car. In the main town, you can easily walk everywhere, and if you want to venture out of the town, you can also take a taxi or rent a bike. For us, the highlight of Café Jate was the wine culture there. You can also do adventurous activities like horseback riding and hiking. We spent one full day dedicated to wine tasting. We left our place at about 10.30 in the morning and spent the day visiting three different wineries outside of the town. First, we went to Finca de las Nubes, a winery at the base of the mountain where you can sit in the garden and admire the beautiful vineyards and scenery. Just on the outskirts of town, the second winery we visited, Bodega El Esteco, is set on a stunning 17th century estate. You can walk around the huge property and admire the gardens and beautiful architecture. In the tasting room, you do have the option to pour your own taste using the fancy wine dispensing mechanism that they have. This was super fun for us as we had never seen anything like it before and we loved being able to taste the wines when we wanted and decide how much of each to pour. You basically get a card that you insert into the machine, select which wine you want to taste and which size, and then it pours you one. At the end, you simply go to the front desk with your card and pay for what you tasted. The third winery we went to was Bodega Domingo Molino, set further up into the hills on a property overlooking the valley. We enjoyed how the staff working there treated us like family, giving us a very personalized experience. If you'd like to go wine tasting in the town, you also have several options. You can easily follow the wine trail around town, visiting several wine tasting rooms, all within walking distance of each other. Many of these places are tasting rooms, so they don't have vineyards or winemaking facilities on site. This is a great option for a partial day activity or if you don't have transport to take you around. Aside from wine tasting, you have many other activities to do. We went horseback riding one morning through the vineyards, river, and desert, which was an amazing experience. There are also dozens of hikes in the area to check out close by. Unfortunately, we ran out of time for hiking in Capajate, so ended up stopping at a couple of scenic places alongside the road on our way back to Salta. There are many beautiful lookout points and rock formations that you can stop off at and explore. Papa Jata had some of my favorite restaurants of the trip. We fell in love with the wine bar called Bad Brothers Wine Experience. They have a beautiful patio and garden where you can sit and enjoy their wines as well as alternative dishes infused with spices, herbs, and local wines. Our other favorite was another pena called Doña Argentina. It has a fun and lively laid back vibe and every night they have live musical performances where you can hang out and enjoy the delicious food and wine. After Capajate, we drove back to Salta to return the car and take a bus to another region of Argentina. Salta does not have a commercial airport, so flying in or out of there isn't an option. 